We are in the City of Roses, specifically at the Child Center on the campus of the University of Portland, where tonight the Portland Pilots will host Pepperdine in a key WCC women's basketball game. Glad to have you with us. Pepperdine coming in at 7 and 12, 2 and 7 in conference play, while the Portland Pilots at 14 and 6, 8 and 1 in conference play. Looking at the lineups right here, JMO, let's start with the visiting waves. Jane Waba is a player that we know very, very well, and she is a good one. She is averaging almost 10 and 5 a game, super athletic. Really going to be a huge key tonight, especially with Stedman out. Got to be a big factor on the offensive end for the waves. All right, on the other side of the ledger with the Pilots, who are you keying on? Emmy Shear, man, she has been solid from the three-point line. She's shooting almost 46%, and that's exactly what these Pilots needed coming into this last conference play, you know, going into the second round here. She'll be a big factor offensively as well. You know, I got to ask you, too, about Mikkel Meek getting that starting uh, nod at the point guard position with Haley Andrews out for the rest of the year, having blown out her ACL against Gonzaga mid-January. Well, a huge, you know, addition. She's been been super solid over the last three weeks been in the rotation so she knows the role she's done a good job especially last week and of stepping in and, and, and just being solid and that's all they need from her run the show hit the open shot and take care of the basketball it's just so great for the pilots to finally be back at home you know they lose to gonzaga after losing haley andrews to that knee injury late in that ball game. She was having a career night, if you yeah, will. Yeah. Uh, but then they go on the road, as you mentioned, in the open and win two critical games. Absolutely crucial for this Portland Pilot bunch as they stay in the WCC race at 8-1 in conference play. As we mentioned, 14-6 overall. This is a great time before tip to bring in Brenna Green, the third member of our broadcast team. Brenna, what do you got? We are officially on a record watch for UP's Alex Fowler. She is 36 points away from breaking the school's all-time D1 scoring record. She's averaging 18 points per game, so it's totally feasible that she could break that record during this two-game homestand this week. And talking to head coach Mike Meek, he said what's remarkable is how Alex has gotten close to this record. She's such a selfless player, and normally, selfless players just aren't breaking scoring records. He also had to say this about her career. Quote, it's not normal for her not to have a good game. It's normally good, great, or awesome. I love that. Back to you guys. Oh, man. Brenna, thank you. I love that, too, when Mike said that to all of us in the call. I'm so glad you brought that up. Are you going to be good, great, or awesome tonight, Alex? And usually it's awesome. We are underway. Well, I'd take one of her good, great, or awesomes any day. <laughs> I was a coach. Pilots in their home whites with the purple trim. Pepperdine, orange with the blue trim. Obima looking for some help. Ten on the shot clock. Well, we talked about getting quality possessions. Great job on the offensive boards right there. Good kick out. Obima gives this Pepperdine bunch new life. Back rim and off is Waba. And again, again yeah. Well, if you're the Pilots, you've got to do a better job of keeping her off the boards, putting a body on her early. You know, when you're in a zone situation and you're matched up, it's going to be different people. They've got to be physical. Look inside. Six on the shot clock. Extra pass goes to Friend. And all those offensive caroms result in the three-pointer. Well, absolutely. Great job by Pepperdine in that opening possession. Great job on the boards. Kick out three, and, you know, if you're giving up offensive boards and that many tries, you're going to be in trouble. Kind of a busted play. Nothing busted about that. And there's Fowler on cue, WCC Player of the Week. Well, just, she's so versatile. Right there, you see her, you know, taking somebody off the bounce, one dribble from the high post, and really, really hard matchup for opponents. Fowler coming off that 20-point game against Pacific. Wild shot at the rim as Walls. Let's see if that ball's off Pepperdine. Yep, off a friend, and it'll be Pepperdine's ball. You know, should mention that Ali Stedman, the sophomore guard, last year WCC All-Freshman team, hasn't played since January 5th with that knee injury, and they're really missing her. They really are, and we thought we might see some maybe limited minutes from her this evening, but... Uh, you know, just being smart. Don't want to bring, you know, your, one of your better players back too early. 
but they certainly miss her on the offensive end. Here's Fowler, Kaitu'u, looking for the footwork. Good D inside, really good D by Amosa. Amosa doing just a great job of bodying up, but you're right. I mean, contested shot. That ball's got to get kicked out and, and swung. Three to two, Pepperdine with the early lead. We're in the first quarter here at the Child Center. Here's Walls, transfer out of Bucknell. Three on the shot clock. Walls runs into her own teammate. She's got to put it up. Not there. More offensive rebounding by Pepperdine. Can't get it home and into the hands of Meek. Well, again, another offensive board really hurting the pilots. They've got to do a better job on the defensive end. Nice job in transition. Vernon misses the three. Pepperdine on the move. Waba. Good stick, good finish. Wow, they're just so athletic. Can create. She thought about shooting that three. Much better job of getting to the paint. Waba averages about 10 points a game, really hits those offensive rebounds. And without Stedman, who gives you 15, it's the Wabas, it's the Walls that are really going to have to step up. Yeah, when you have a situation like that, you don't need somebody to go off for 30, but you need multiple yep. people to get, you know, four to six points more collective effort. Friend with the foul, her first team's first. Kaitu'u flags down the poke check. Spinning, wants to get the fit footwork going and does. Well, great, great job of coming back to the right side on the pivot. Kaitu'u, I think she had it right from the beginning, just decided to come back. And Portland, a little stagnant offensively. They need to get some ball swings. Walls hawked by Meek. 5-4, Pepperdine with the early lead. Look at the strong move inside. Obima just not quitting on the play. Man, they're just hammering the boards on the offensive end. Well, Ob Obima just doing a terrific job. Pepperdine's got five offensive boards already in this quarter. First four minutes of the game. That's just good Pepperdine defense right there. And Amosa again playing the good D, drawing the charge. Well, you, you love the effort on both ends of the floor by Pepperdine. They've come to play. You know, you talk about a team that's kind of coming into their own. Different people stepping up, different roles. You know, Coach talked about their identity this week, just playing super hard as a group. That victory over LMU snaps a seven-game skid against their arch rival as Frawley checks in for Portland. And let's talk about the, the, the coaching situation at Pepperdine. Yeah, I mean, uh, right now... You know, Brian Rosario is standing in for Kristen Dowling, who's out with some personal reasons. We wish her well and hope to see her back soon, but right now, really collectively working together as getting this group going in their fourth year together as a staff. And wow, Obima oh, and one. The strength of Obima, the transfer out of TCU. She has been all over that low block area. And nobody able to stop her whatsoever when she's all of a sudden decided to go to the rim. Oof. So Kaitu picks up that foul, her first team second. Obima, again, the transfer from TCU, completes the three-point play. And hey, how about it? Lucy Cochran on the floor for the first time since the Washington State game when she injured her foot, and that's got to feel like forever ago, December 7th. Welcome back, Lucy. It feels like forever ago. You're absolutely right. And when you have that kind of a player rim protector out, these pilots are going to be welcoming her back defensively for sure. Obima with that foul called against her, her first team second. Cochran, ultimate rim protector, shot blocker. Oh, the Pilots have missed her, and she is back. Bruno on the floor as well for the Pilots. Ball into the hands of Walls, and she's just going to keep on coming. Pepperdine doing a nice job defensively of just taking the rhythm out for this Pilot team. Eight to one rebounding advantage for the Waves at this point. 
Obima again, so strong inside. And the ball will belong to the Pilots, but again, it's Pepperdine going after everything loose off the rim. Yeah, and again, when you're in a, a matchup zone or in a zone situation, a lot of times it's you don't have a specific person, you gotta go find somebody. And right now, Portland really struggle on the glass. 10 to four, Waves with the lead. They've come out strong and inspired. Yeah, playing with a ton of energy. Nice in and out by Fowler. That's really good defense inside by Obima. They're letting him play, I like it. Fowler with the initial good move, but Obima stood home and stood her ground. Yeah, especially, you know, she, right, right before this possession, she picked up a foul. There's friend, Cochran on the boards right yes, there. Friend jacks it up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Waba just crashes into Fowler, kind of face guarding in. On, obviously, Waba picking up that foul, her first team's third. Boy, and if you're a pilot fan, you see a superstar go down and you just, your breath just, oh baby. Fowler's okay, but right now the pilots trail by six. Welcome back to the Childs Center. Pepperdine leading Portland 10 to four. Great to see Lucy Cochran back on the floor. Brenna, it's been a long time coming and yay, she's back. Thank goodness. I talked to Lucy before the game and she said she really didn't think she was that hurt during the WSU game. She sincerely just thought she needed to rest her foot a little bit. However, x-rays revealed a stress fracture being out for this nearly two month stretch. Lucy described as challenging and a long wait. However, she got through a few sessions earlier this week and felt good. That's when she knew she was good to go. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Brenna. So Cochran, Back on the floor, Kelsey Lindsay checking in during that dead ball and quickly hits a triple for the Pilots. Boy, Portland needed that, so 10 to seven. Pepperdine still with the lead. Yeah, huge shot coming in off the bench in at a two, two minute, 15 second drought for the Pilots. And if you're the Pilot fan right now, you want to see them get going offensively. Teresa Grace and Banifo on the floor for Pepperdine. She finally got back into the lineup last game after missing a bunch of games with a knee injury as well. So Pepperdine trying to get well. Over and back, bodies flying. Mike Meek thought the ball was tipped and that it was a live ball and Kelsey with every right to dive for it. Yeah, and they're gonna call well, it, yep. it was tipped. Yep. And both teams really kind of back and forth with scoring droughts, just a little bit over two minutes. Now for Pepperdine, who started really hot, and again doing a terrific job on the boards. So Cochran will sit. She played about two minutes, J-Mo. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to see in and out, in and out with her, just to kind of get her going. One on the shot clock, Fowler's got to put it up. 
Rim and out. Frawley, offensive board, and gets her home. And that's what Keely Frawley does right there for you. Motor, man, she comes in and makes things happen. Great offensive board. She was terrific in that victory over Pacific the other night. Frawley with the 10 points, three boards, five assists, a couple of triples. Boy, they need that in Haley Andrews' absence. Well, that's where, you know, I'm talking about by committee. Yeah. You get a player like that that steps in and has a bigger game. That's exactly what you need. And there's a turnover right there. Sheer with the steal. No finish there. Pilots trying to take their first lead of the game. Pepperdine would have none of it. Here's Walls. They've contained her well so far. KK Brody on the floor for Pepperdine. Both clubs using their benches. KK Mbanifo, and now from the outside, it'll be Pepperdine. Waba elevates, back rim and off, another offensive rebound. Wow, Jane gets it home. Offensive rebounds killing Portland right now. Oh, you're absolutely right. Seven offensive boards right now for the Waves and seven second chance points. I mean, right there, that's the huge difference in the game. And that ends a three and a half minute drought. Bruno hits the ground hard as she's fouled. You know, talking with Coach Meek this week, this week, he was talking about all the flow that they've had offensively. I really feel like this first quarter right now, they're just not getting ball touches like they were in the past two weeks. Kaitu back in, Fowler will take a seat. Brumfield, who had checked in for Pepperdine, picks up that foul, her first, team's fourth. 2.06 left to go in this first quarter. Pepperdine leading from the get-go. Well, and Obima, in, in my opinion, really set the tone for this Pepperdine club right from the get-go. Offensive glass, putbacks, just taking it to the rim. Very aggressive and defensively made some big stops. She's one of the best rebounders in the WCC and really showing that it doesn't matter what end of the floor. Obima's been fun to watch hammering those boards. Yeah, super athletic. Yep. Bruno, oops. We're gonna play on, misses them both. Still 12-9, Pepperdine. Bruno bringing a little heat, that's what she does. Yeah, so versatile in the guard spot. Obima, so strong. What a game Obima is having. Seven points now, five boards. She's over her seasonal average of five points and six and a half boards. She's nearing that. Well, I'll tell you, that was a strong Man, move to the rim. I guess. Cheer. Nothing dropping right now for this pilot club. Great hustle, hustle play by Bruno. Great hustle play by Bruno, and Portland retains possession. Yeah, that's all about just MJ getting after it, getting on the floor, 50-50 ball, making things happen. Burnham and Meek back in the pilot lineup with 1.23 left to go in the first quarter. Low scoring quarter for the Portland Pilots. Well, they haven't scored in just over two minutes. Waba may be picking up her second foul, and that is oh, that's big. big. So Waba, she's only fouled out the one time, but she's going to have to be really smart. And I think they're going to sub for her right here. That's a big the foul right there, 11, picking up her second. Yeah. Friend. So athletic. There's a look at Friend. She'll toe the line. And here's Burnham. Pilot struggling from the free throw line. Well, I guess so oh, far. Oh, of three. So Burnham gets one of two, 14 10. Well done by Wallace to break. The little press almost loses it though. Plenty of time as she goes inside. Good pass. Great pass. The cut was there. Amosa mopping up, but that is all Obima. Oh, you're right. Double team, triple team. Found the open player down low. And Portland tried to do something to get it out of her hands, and she did a great job. Three straight scores for Pepperdine. And Burnham with the answer. Well, you'd like to see Maisie get going a little bit. She has not produced in the point category. 
like she was, and there's gonna be a quick foul on Shear. So Walls goes flying, Shear with her first team's third. Walls again, you know, mostly a distributor and defender when she was at Bucknell, and boy, enjoying a career year scoring-wise. Turnover, and here comes Portland. Shot clock off, game clock at 20 right now. Here we go. Meek, hawked on the outside. 10 now for Shear, waving everybody off. Portland's gotta get something going. They're going awfully late into this one. Good kick. kick. Meek loves the three, and that is huge at the buzzer. And that's Emmy Shear bringing all the defenders in, and Meek going to that short corner. You're absolutely right. Help side came to stop her in the paint. Shear finds Meek wide open from the three-point line and a great fill. Meek is a really solid three-point shooter, and the confidence on that stroke, she just didn't hesitate. So 16-15, Pepperdine had a couple of six-point leads. Look at Meek beating the buzzer. One-point lead for Pepperdine going into the second. Start of the second quarter moments away. 16-15 Pepperdine with the lead, but it was Mikkel Meeks buzzer beating three to end the first quarter. That is Portland feeling a little bit better about itself. Brenna Green, third member of our broadcast crew, has a little more on Mikkel Meek. Yeah, Mikkel Meek is the daughter of head coach Mike Meek, and she's getting that starting nod at point guard with Haley Andrews out. Now, you may think that having his daughter starting for him would be something that Mike has dreamed of, but he's a lot more measured than that. He told me from the get-go, he's really just tried to have her be another player on the team, and the father-daughter component doesn't factor in a lot for him. He added Mikkel has worked hard for this opportunity, and the thing that matters is her starting is what gives his team the opportunity to be the best version of themselves. Back to you guys. You know, it's so interesting, Brenna. Thank you. And, and J-Mo, when you, uh, you know, get the father-daughter combination, coach-player, that's an interesting dynamic. It really is. And, you know, he's coached her since she was really young and at all different levels, obviously. And, you know, he talked about just her being able to have that great experience. And I really saw kind of a shift in her game in probably the last three to four weeks. You know, she's healthy, number one. She kind of fought some injuries last year, but she's just being solid, making, you know, the shot, the outside shot, just like she did at the end of the quarter there. And that's exactly what they need from her and just playing her role to a tee. Right, find. Kaitu hesitated for a second and let Obima get back defensively. I'll tell you, Obima is having herself a game. I am really impressed on both ends of the floor. Seven points, six rebounds, two assists. Obima having herself a half. Man. Dumps it. And Bonifo 
with four on the shot clock. Nothing there for Amosa. Well, Portland with the adjustment, and that's just pushing it too much right there. Fortunate that they did not turn that over. Yeah, that's just unlucky for Pepperdine. Yeah. And the Pilots, who have trailed from the get-go, have a chance to grab their first lead of the game. Brody checking back in for Pepperdine. Obima will have a seat. She has been fabulous. Hmm. Another turnover for the Pilots, so can't stand their own good fortune, so it'll be Pepperdine with the ball, with the lead. We're early in the second quarter here at the Child Center. The Pilots have won seven of the last eight games against Pepperdine, including earlier this year by 10 in Malibu. Burnham picks up her second. Well, there's that hot stove touch that you just can't have on the ball handler. So Burnham will sit Frawley back on the floor. High scoring game when these two teams met back at the end, literally the last day of December, 86-76. Low scoring affair here. Brody blocked. Shear got all of that one. Good defense by Shear right there. And right now Portland is getting stuck behind in the paint. Inbound, knocked away on the fly. Sheer, Frawley, and finishes. Great transition bucket from Frawley off the turnover. That's the fourth turnover for the, the Waves. Pilots with their first lead of the game, 17-16. Eight minutes to go in this second quarter. And there's the reach right there. Sheer, if I'm not mistaken, that's her second. Nice job on the block there, coming over, making a great defensive play. Bruno and Cochran back on the floor. Cochran back after a lengthy on the bench regimen since December 7th against Washington State. Played in that game, foot injury. We are gonna wave that basket off. The travel. Oh, we're gonna have a foul going the other way. Offensive, wow. Wow. I'm not sure about that one. So Walls picks up her first, team second. It looked like an and one. It sure did. I think they got her lowering her shoulder. Good cut by Crowley, Mister Fowler. Good D inside by Mbanifo, but the foul is going to go against Pepperdine all the same. And Teresa Grace picks up her first, team's third. Well, credit Pepperdine. Every time Fowler touches the ball, they've got people coming at her. Did a nice job right there of just catching and going straight to the rim, not allowing that double team to get there, and picks up the chance to go to the free throw line. Fowler hits a couple. The lead is now three for the Pilots. Alex coming into this game needing 36 points to become Portland's career leader in points on the, in the D1 era. She's got four right now. Boy, carving through the defense as well as in the finish. She's got a nice handle. Nice little pull up in the, in the paint. Walls gives you 12 points. Nearly five assists, leaves the club and steals. And we're gonna go the other way. So that's Bruno with the foul. Her first, team's third. A lot of whistles, there's just not Man. a lot of rhythm back yep. and forth here. You're reading my mind, partner. <laughs> Physical game, to be sure. Yep. But a lot of whistles. Early on, we didn't hear a lot of tweets. We're hearing him now. Banifo really wanted that ball in the mismatch. And the travel's gonna go against Pepperdine. Well, both teams, again, trying to get into some type of flow. Not the 
you know, there's not uh, just a lot of, to your, to your point, a lot of rhythm and flow, not real clean at this point. Fowler, great footwork and the finish. Man, when she gets you down low like that, you can forget about it. A great step through. She's got six points on the night. If she gets going, she is going to be a load for Pepperdine. Yep. 21-18, Portland with the lead, 6.28 left to go. Nearly a turnover. Just messy stuff for the Waves right now. Seven on the shot clock. Amosa looking for that baseline. And another turnover against Pepperdine. Seventh turnover of the game. And again, just not a lot of offensive flow. They got their two weapons coming back in the game. Yeah, at some point, you got to say to Obima, you're back in there. And even though Waba is playing with the two fouls, you got to have her on the floor, those two with walls. Well, they're just completely different ball club with those two on the floor, just athletically can get to the rim. Lindsay returns for the Pilots. You know, and as, as sloppy as it's been the last few possessions for Pepperdine, they, they only trail by three. Exactly, I mean, we're in a close, tight, you know, dogfight back and forth. I mean, Obima leads all players right now, seven points, six assists. Six boards, six or, boards, excuse yep. Me. Good hustle. It'll be interesting to see if Pepper, Pepperdine can get Mbanifo into a flow, the transfer out of Cornell who gives you 13 points, leads the club in six boards. And again, no Ali Stedman. Yeah. So Mbanifo, who's been struggling with the knee injury, had the 12 points when she returned against LMU last weekend. She's got to do that again tonight. Well, I just think they got to get her the basketball yeah. in a good spot to score. Lindsay, triple. <laughs> Obima skying. She gets hammered. Portland foul for number 22, MJ Bruno. So Bruno... Second. Picks up her second, team's fourth. And Obima is doing a great job in single coverage on Fowler. She really is. I mean, you know, athletically, size-wise, strength-wise, she's right there with Fowler um, and doing a nice job, as you said, defensively. Three-point pilot lead. Traveling violation. Traveling violation against Pepperdine, and, and they just keep giving Portland chances to increase the lead. Yeah, I mean, just a little hop there before yep. she went, but their eighth turnover in the in the half. They average, do the Waves, 18 turnovers a game. They, they, they've got to clean some stuff up. They're lucky they're not down by 10. Well, this is smart because Obima's got the two fouls. She can't pick up the third. Good job by Fowler, just taking her off the bounce. So there was a correction. Obima only has the one foul. Good double team by Lindsay from the opposite side. Quick hands. Here's Bruno running the floor. Fowler throws it right into the hands of Pepperdine. And Walls with the sticky mitts. And here she comes. Oh, great crossover. Wow. Great crossover and nice little mid-range pull up. So Pepperdine proves that when they can handle the ball and not turn it over, they can not only end the drought, but score a little too. The lead is three for Portland, 420 left to go in this second quarter backdoor cut. Boy, that's a dandy, and Fowler finds her friend Bruno. Good cut, but that's Alex Fowler right there on the read and a nice, nice finish by Bruno. Fowler is just such a multi-dimensional player. We always hang our hat on points, but what she does to distribute, to rebound, to just All run the, the traps, as they say. So another Pepperdine turnover. A lot of unforced errors on the Waves. Oh, we're going to stay right there with Pepperdine. That ball was off the Pilots. Backdoor cut. Beautifully done. Bruno has the layup. And you see she was all by herself. Portland by five.
six a couple of times in that first quarter, but now lead by five over the visiting Pepperdine Waves with four minutes to go left in the second quarter. Alex Fowler starting to heat up a little bit and better rebounding on the defensive end by the Pilots. Well, absolutely. The, you know, in the first quarter, they had 12 rebounds, Pepperdine did, and this quarter only two. The other thing is you, you look at, you know, the scoring right now, 10 to four in this category, in this quarter, and the turnovers have been the biggest difference. Nine turnovers, six in this quarter for 11 points for Portland. Pilots playing better defense, taking care of the boards a little bit better. Nicely run, and yeah. that low, that yeah, low. Obima continues to have herself a night. She's got nine points. Season high is 12, career high is 19. I'm actually really shocked at those numbers, the way she's playing tonight. Nine on the shot clock for Lindsay, takes the pick and Fowler's wide open. Extra pass, Bruno, triple, yeah! Well, that's a great job of sharing the basketball, making the extra pass. Started off with Lindsay. Five points now for Bruno over her seasonal average of three and a half. Both teams, three for three from the field. Good take. Oh, Jane. Wow, she'll go to the line, and she was flat on her back when she just got hammered. Follows her own miss. She'll go to the free throw line. Well, a good take, but an even better offensive board right there. Again, you see her athleticism, ability to create and get to the rim. Kaitu with her second, a bunch of Portland Pilots saddled with two fouls, and Kaitu, one of them, fifth team foul. So here's Waba, a 64% free throw shooter. Emily Sewell checking into the pilot lineup. Freshman out of Australia, and today is Australia Day. Seven Aussies yes. on the UP roster, and 19 Australians represented in the WCC in six of the clubs in our conference. That, that, uh, <laughs> it's a hotbed over man, there. Man, you recruit, you go to Australia, yep. you get some of the greats. You sure do. Oh, well, they got a free throw violation. They have a late violation yep. on the pilots. They got Lindsay for that, so Waba will try it again. 5'10 junior out of California. Well, I tell you, Pepperdine just really aggressive to the rim on the boards. Fowler tees up the three and cans it. She expands her range and just makes her even better. 11 points. You're absolutely right. I mean, that's something that she's worked on and worked on and is really, I think, gaining a lot of confidence in this last three to four weeks. Good duck in. So Sewell commits that foul as Obima got the inside. You know, she just she just if camps ready, out where ball, that strength ball. is. It's impossible if you don't if you don't push her off or do your early work, you're in trouble. Yeah, you if she gets in that restricted circle and you're on her back, you're in big trouble. Lefty rims out. First free throw miss of the night. 57% free throw shooter. Gets one of two. Returning for the pilots, number one, Mikkel Meek. Meek back on the floor as Obima hits double figures for the third time this season. Really keeping Pepperdine in it. Walls has been yeah. pretty quiet in yeah. the scoring department. Yeah, she's had a couple little pull-ups, but really Portland doing a nice job of making her get rid of it. Fowler triple again. WCC Player of the Week, she wants more. Well, three possessions in a row where Portland has hit a three by penetrating and kicking or making the extra pass. Five of nine from the three-point line. Good double team by Fowler. They get the steal. Pickoff. 
Meek hesitates, wide open Frawley, and I mean wide open. Nothing there, that would have brought down the house. The lead is still 10, though, for the Pilots. Fowler has come alive. Lindsay with her first, more free throws for Pepperdine. At the line for the Waves, number 12, Marley Walls. Shooting two. Fowler had two points yep. in the first quarter. Two. Yep. And she has taken off now with 14. You know, her seasonal average is just at 18. And you just put such a load on this kid, especially with Haley Andrews gone. Well, she kind of inherited that role last year, so it's something that she's used to. And like we talked about in the open, I mean, she's a focus for every team. And she just Come on. another one. Fowler with another triple. <laughs> Her career high in triples, four. And Portland has been hot, especially Fowler. Well, three of five from the three-point line. Wow. All I would say in the last three minutes, really. She has just been on a tear. Look at Lindsay coming in. Another turnover. Scrum for the ball. Possession arrow favoring Pepperdine. You see the frustration of Obima because the pilots with the quick hands going for everything, JMO. Well, they're making it extremely hard for her now to get to the rim as she was doing in that first quarter. Good adjustment by the pilots. And right now, Pepperdine has not scored a field goal in three minutes. Just way too many turnovers for this Pepperdine bunch. No Allie Stedman. Leaves this club with 15 points a game. She's missing yet another contest with that lingering knee issue. Well, and you're right. I mean, you talk about turnovers. That's the 11th turnover in this quarter. Wow. Frustrating. Excuse evening. me. Ele seventh okay. turnover in this quarter. 11th of the game. Well, that's still too many. Yep. Under 45 to go. Meek a little short on that shot. Good board by Walls. She has been rebounding. Has Marley just not scoring at this point. Spin nice move. Spin. Man, that's sweet. That was a nice take to the rim. In game one, Walls had 20 points, six boards, and six assists. She just took things over for Pepperdine. Maybe she could get things going. Shot clock off, game clock at 10. Meek hesitates, looking for a cutter. Lindsay blocked. Lindsay throws it away. Good defense on that uh, possession by Pepperdine. Away. Good communication and a great block. So a couple of six-point leads for Pepperdine in the first quarter, long gone as Portland with the dominant second frame, leading Pepperdine 37-28. Impressive second frame for the Pilots. Absolutely, and it was led by their defense creating turnovers that led it either into transition buckets and then did a great job of sharing the basketball, executing, and then hitting big shots. Alex Fowler, tremendous in that second quarter. Two points for Fowler in the first quarter, 15 in the second quarter, and all of those triples. Fabulous second quarter for Alex and the Pilots. And standing by, Brenna Green with Pilot Head Coach Mike Meek. Brenna? Just mentioned it. What a second quarter by Alex Fowler. 15 of her 17 points in that frame. What is it like for you? watching from the sidelines when she comes alive like that. You know, I just think, I'm just proud of the way she's worked on her game, <clears throat> proved her perimeter skills, her three-point shooting, and I'm glad it's just taken off more right now. She's doing a great job. So, and, our, and you know, our team is doing a great job finding her, too. Absolutely. It's not just your offense that came alive in that second quarter, your defense as well, forcing seven Pepperdine turnovers. Was there anything you changed defensively going into that second quarter that, that made that possible? You know, I, I, I felt like the, the team did a better job just reckoning, recognized the times they could go double, and simply we did a way better job in the rebounding. I mean, they, they really hurt us early in rebounding, and, you know, they're a great team. We're going to have to come ready to rebound this half, too. Thanks so much, Coach B. Thank Back you. to you guys.
Thanks, Brenna. Thanks, Mike. All right, impressive second quarter for the Portland Pilots, leading to a 37-28 halftime lead. Pepperdine's going to have to take care of the ball, and somebody's going to have to get hot for the waves. Right now, it's all Alex Fowler. 17 points, 15 of those coming in the second quarter. Pilots with the lead. This is Maria. Maria banks with CCCU. She has a first time home buyer savings account and a dog named Dave. She plays pickup soccer. She's about to get a mortgage and loves listening to music. She's just the kind of member that can take advantage of everything CCCU has to offer. And I just like what credit unions stand for. From customer to customized, bank locally, live simply with CCCU. What is our way? Our way is unrelenting. Imposing as the mountaintops to our east, strong as the ocean to our west. Our way is forward, challenged by past achievement, expecting future success. Our way is committed, devoted, passionate. Our way fuels us to be different, to be inspired, to have faith in each other. What is our way? Our way is west. Some people might call it a job. I call it a mission. Helping people get back on their way. When you're a roadside technician for AAA, every day is different. We're always ready to be there for you when your call comes in. I love seeing that smile on a member's face when you get them rolling again. It makes you feel good. At the end of the day, it's all about helping people. That's what keeps me going. Even when I was little, just growing up, I knew I wanted to play in college. I've kind of always just wanted to go here so I'd come out to the games and like sit in the stands and see them. And like, I genuinely believed that I could be one of them. Being on the court felt like nothing else mattered. I just thought it was fun. I've always been not the most athletic, not the tallest, not the skinniest. I know what it's like to feel like you can't do it, but you really can. I 
play to prove others wrong. I find purpose in making the people who supported me proud. Trust that all the hard work you've put in is going to pay off. Go out there and try to prove each and every person wrong that's ever doubted you. Running a race is one of the most physically and mentally challenging things, but crossing that finish line, that feeling just can't be matched. Competing feels like I'm on top of the world. All it takes is one conversation. I'm just proud of their team performance. All it takes is one opportunity to be successful. Pick 10, now in the championship round, like what can you tell me? I mean, what a celebration to have. Being in the stands as a little girl and now being on the court, being able to represent myself and the game and University of Portland. I used to see myself as just a basketball player. Now I see myself as a role model. Here's to the next gen. Time continues here in the City of Roses. We're at the Child Center, campus of the University of Portland. Pilots leading Pepperdine 37-28 at the break. Big WCC women's contest for both clubs. Pilots trailing in that first quarter a couple of times, Jennifer Mountain, by six points, but then just took over in the second frame. Well, I'll tell you, Alex Fowler took over in that second quarter. <laughs> I mean, 15 points. Just was tremendous, and I really felt like it, their defense fueled their offense. They got in a better flow. They shared the basketball, and then were terrific from the three-point line, shooting 50% in that half. Portland's defense forcing the 10 turnovers against uh, by this Pepperdine bunch, and that really stopped the flow of the waves. That was pretty good from the outset, and then Fowler got going. You mentioned the 15 points in the second quarter, 17 in all in 18 minutes of play, three triples. You just can't say enough about this kid. I mean, just tremendous. Like you said, I mean, scoring in so many different ways. And you talked about their defense feeling everything, but she got it going, took took a great job, went right to the rim. Nice little step back, little up and under move. 
She's just so versatile. She can score inside out. Lindsay, again, doing a good job hitting her at the three-point line. And this is an area that she has gotten a lot better at and really shooting with a lot of confidence right now. And if you're Mike Meek, you're going to be really happy with that. Fowler just continuing to show the range, too. She's worked really, really hard to get that three-point shot down. Yeah, three of five in that first half. And like I said, a lot of it's confidence. Once you start getting a little confident, he's, she's been working on this in the offseason, and the last month really is shooting it really well. You better not go under those picks when Fowler nope. tees it up. All right, numbers coming at you, J-Mo. Let's see what sticks out. Well, you know, you, both teams actually shooting decent from the field. But uh, right now, I think that the turnovers were huge for Pepperdine in that first half. Rebounds, we talked about that. That first quarter, Pepperdine did a tremendous job of getting to the offensive glass, still leading by eight, but I thought there was a quite a difference in that second quarter. And again, the 10 turnovers leading to seven, 11, excuse me, 11 uh, points for Portland in transition and easy buckets. Pilots lead the conference in field goal percentage, and they were white hot from the floor in that second period, especially. And from the three-point line, I yep. mean, you see it 50, almost 54% from the field, but 50% from that three-point line. You know, for about a year and a half, we talked about the pilot shooting woes from beyond the arc, but man, they <laughs> have really turned things around in this season, especially in conference play. They really have. And the other stat when you, you're looking at this as you look at the bench points, and that's the depth that this Portland squad had. I mean, you had mentioned multiple players with two fouls. People coming in and contributing, that's going to be huge. And then points in the paint pretty even. We'll watch that through this second, second half. So the Portland Pilots, after a dominant second quarter, posting the 37-28 lead over the visiting Pepperdine Waves. It'll be really interesting to see if the Waves can clean up in terms of those turnovers and get back into this thing. And will Fowler continue her hot hand? I don't know why not. Pilots leading at 37-28. Halftime almost over, third quarter on the way.
moments away from the start of the third quarter here at the Child Center. Portland leading Pepperdine 37-28. Brenna Green catching up with acting Pepperdine head coach Brian Rosario. Yeah, I asked Brian about Portland's three-point shooting in particular. He said his team is over-helping right now on the three-point line, and that is what is making these threes so easy for the UP women to make, specifically noting Fowler having three threes is, is not ideal for his team. I did ask him what he liked about his team in the first half. He says they're competing. They're making adjustments when we ask them to. So we'll see if they can make more adjustments in this second half. Back to you guys. Yeah, Brenna, thanks. Uh, the Waves are going to have to make some adjustments to be sure as the third quarter begins here at the Child Center. Fowler picks up the dribble. Fowler, another triple try, rimming out. That would have tied her career high. Wow. And that looked good from the second and left her hand. You know, the thing that's different now is she's really looking for the three, which I would say probably a month and a half ago, that was not something that was in her repertoire. So, you know, I, I like the fact that he talked about them competing because she they are really doing a good job of competing, especially that first quarter. Nice pass. What a great pass by Walls. Easy pickings for Amosa, but that is all Marley Walls. She's so fun to watch. She is in there. We talk about overhelp right there. That's exactly what uh, the pilot said, and she made them pay. Walls with a really solid game. Remember, no Allie Stedman for Pepperdine. Again, dealing with that knee injury. She's missed a handful of games. Good board inside. Waba just yanks that down, and here comes Pepperdine. Well, Waba just doing a really good job defensively on Burnham right there. Really tough contested shot. She needed to kick that one out. Jane missed a bunch of the second quarter playing with the two fouls. See if she can stay on the floor. It's a seven-point lead for Pepperdine. Walls switching hands. Walls can't get up and over Kaitu'u. Ball is loose. Meek's going to go up ahead to Burnham. She's going to hesitate. Not there. Somehow, some way, Shear comes up with it, and the jump ball possession arrow favoring Pepperdine. Well, great court vision by Mikkel Meek. Literally didn't even take a dribble. Found her player. Burnham not able to finish, but Shear almost getting that, at, you know, a second opportunity for Portland. Alex Fowler, leading scorer in WCC play with 17 points heading into this third quarter. She averages nearly 18. She is something else. Extra pass, Pepperdine. Can't get the three down. Fowler with the board up top, Burnham. Good job by Fowler, just working down low against Waba. She's so tough, she's got the height advantage. She knew it on the single coverage. And Fowler with another deuce. Ooh. So we're gonna go the other way. As Fowler plays the great D, coaxes the charge. Obima picks up her second. You can really see kind of out of this halftime where Portland really wants to pick the pace and go a little quicker. Swinging it on the outside are the pilots. Oh, good job by Shear, just backing her down. Coming back through her left hand, strong finish. First points of the game for Shear. She's a double figure scorer. Yeah, just not too many opportunities thus far. Got herself in a little foul trouble. Good take to the rim. Walls gets fouled. She will go to the free throw line. So Shear picks up her third first team foul of the quarter for Portland. Well, right on cue. Like we talked about that first half, two fouls had to sit out quite a bit. Brumfield returns to the Pepperdine lineup. Frawley in for Portland. Rimming out is Walls, a really good free throw shooter. Leads this club in takes and makes from the free throw line. Transfer out of Bucknell. If you're Pepperdine, you just cannot afford these scoring droughts. Again, a little bit over two, almost 215 with no field goals. If you want to get yourself back in the game, you just have got to give yourself possessions where you have production. 10-point deficit. And the travel's going to go against the pilots. 
Kite, too, couldn't believe it, but we'll head the other way. Fifth turnover of the game for Portland. Actually pretty clean so far. Pepperdine doesn't butter the bread with threes. This isn't a team that's going to load up on taking them and making them, but they've been really quiet from beyond the arc. They really have it, and, and Portland's doing a nice job. Again, credit their defense, kind of playing personnel. Great job by, ooh, Kai is going to pick up a foul here. That'll be her third. Good inside position by Amosa. Portland fouls number 23, Diana Kaitu, her third. So second team foul, but Kaitu does have the three. She'll take a seat, and here comes Cochran again. Welcome back to the floor, Lucy Cochran. She hurt her foot against Washington State on December 7th, and this is the first game she has played since then. And again, no Haley Andrews. The dynamic... Aussie guard, and we'll watch the foul right there. That's easy call. Yeah. Andrews blowing her knee out, same knee again against Gonzaga mm. on January 14th. So as Cochran comes back into the lineup, Haley will watch from the bench. Portland doing a good job of rub screens, getting that ball side top side, getting a lot of people touches. 10 on the shot clock for Meek. Fowler wants it back, puts the ball on the deck. The flip to Meek. Flagging it down, going the other way. Amosa having a fine game. Obima wanted it. She still does. Single coverage with Fowler. There's the double. There's the double. Walls. Obima, lucky she didn't get an over the back call. Here comes Meek. Yeah, good defense by Portland, making them kick that out off the double team. Wow, just a big stick by Burnham. Really good three-point shooter and shows you why. Big momentum shift right there again. Really struggling from the floor. They haven't scored in three and a half minutes. Just throwing that ball up there. Is, you know, yeah. Obima thought she was going to get a foul called against Cochran. We'll play on. Basket didn't want that. Fowler on the run. Oh, nice. Lucy Cochran trying to get into the scoring column for the first time in a month of Sundays. <laughs> Fowler did a great job of yep. finding her in transition. That's the thing. Cochran, Cochran can run the floor. She's just going to have a hard time with limited minutes kind of getting into a flow offensively. Mm. Walls does a really good job of just kind of creating contact and getting Fowler to pick up the foul. It's only her first, though. Oh, Team's third. Fowler, yeah, she does a great job of changing direction, getting into paint, like I mentioned earlier. But just, again, Fowler doing a great job. Pepperdine with no field goals in four and a half minutes. Burnham, she had the 20 against Pacific. She's got the three right there.
44-32, Portland with the lead over Pepperdine. Jennifer Mountain, it hurts my heart no. to see Haley Andrews in street close. It hurts my heart, too. Just so unfortunate. Such a great talent, and seeing her go down a week ago against Gonzaga, yeah. having one of the best games she's had of her career, 27 points that night. What she has done for this Portland Pilot program cannot be quantified. 1,500 points, 550 assists, 500 rebounds, 150 steals, give or take. Two-time all-conference, second all-time in terms of assists on the UP charts. Man. All told, 1,547 points at UP. All those other categories just stuff in the stat sheets. And just the type of kid she is, I mean. Cochran with her first block since way back when, before the injuries against Washington State, and the drought continues for Pepperdine. Yeah, just really struggling from the field. Oh, of their last seven. Good job of Burnham posting up here, size advantage. Yep, just flips it in. And now with eight points is Burnham. Gives you 11 points a pop. This is a well-balanced pilot club. Look at Walls. So the late whistle will put her at the line. She's got a great crossover. Change of direction, gets into the paint so well. Good read there on the mid-range jumper. Gets herself to the free throw line. Bruno picks up her third, team's fourth. So here's Walls, 5'7 grad student out of Kentucky, transfer out of Bucknell. She's got the NCAA tournament experience, does Marley. She's really asserted herself out of the halftime, too, just looking to score a little bit more, trying to push the pace and create. So another lane violation on a free throw by the Pilots. That's the second time, right? Yeah, second yeah. time. Coach Meek's not going to be uh -uh. happy with that. So Walls will tee it up again and scores. Yeah, that's just a mental error that you cannot have happen. Close games, comes down to a couple possessions. That, that kills you. 11 points now for Walls. 13th double-figure game of the season for her. Frawley, Cochran. Not there. Good block out collectively by Pepperdine. And here comes Walls. They want the ball in her hands. So strong. Rimming out. And Benefo. They've had quite a few of those, just kind of in and out, up and down. Just not finishing right now. 3.15 left to go in the third. Lead is 12 for Portland. I mean, Pepperdine, no field goals for six minutes. Mm. That is incredible. You, whew, that is beyond frigid. Four on the shot clock. Cochran squaring up. A nice follow. So there was a heck of a battle going on be between Bruno and Brumfield. So Brumfield will get whistled for her third. Team's second. Meek back on the floor. Helena Friend back on to the court for Pepperdine. Fowler re-enters the Portland Pilot lineup. Well, the thing that's amazing is, you know, it's only a 12-point game, and you haven't scored a field goal for six minutes. A lot of time left in this ballgame if you're Pepperdine, and that's one way to do it is to defensively get it going. Heady play by Meek to knock it off the body of Waba. So it'll be Portland's ball with 14 on the shot clock. Mm. And the foul is going to go against Walls. Her second, team's third. Lindsay did a good job of coming back to that ball on the inbounds. A little soft pass. Almost a turnover there for the Pepperdine Waves. Bruno high off the glass and gets it home. And you see Friend on the floor grabbing an ankle. Mm. You hate to see that. I don't know if it's an ankle or a knee. Yeah, we won't even guess. Initially, she looked like she grabbed 
uh, you know, kind of at the top of her sock, but we aren't going to guess. Nope. In a lot of pain, though. Yep. Freshman out of California. Training staff. So friend still on her back with the training staff tending to her. Well, we talk about injuries, you know, every mm -hmm. team for the most part has been plagued with injuries in this conference right now. And some of the top players, you look at uh, Gonzaga Trong has been out, Haley Andrews here at Portland, the two top teams in the conference, two of the best players returning from last year friend is in a ton of pain the freshman yep. you know she started some six games th today marks her seventh start she's got the really good range uh, you know Pepperdine with the injuries have had to kind of throw this kid into the fire and and put her into a starting role and she's responded so well but walking gingerly with the aid of the trainers off the floor well at least she's able to put a little bit of weight on it that's a positive sign Remember, no Ali Stedman. She's been out basically since January 5th, their leading scorer. Teresa Grace and Banifo, this is only her second game since missing a bunch with a knee injury as well. And now Friend will go to the end of the bench and get tended to. Here comes the pilot heat. Waba. Bruno hawks her. Jane puts the shoulder down and gets across that midcourt line. Ooh, big screen. And the drought continues. Offensive rebound, though. Walls just flips it up. Waba keeps battling. My goodness, that's unlucky for Pepperdine. Gosh, three chances there. Oh, of 11 right now in this span of not being able to score, and now we've got another player down. I didn't see it. Nope, so action away from the ball. Neither one of us saw it as we were following the ball, and near the hash mark, you know, the injury happened. I think she took an elbow. I think she took an elbow to the face there on the MJ Bruno's down right now with an elbow, I think, to the face. And they'll, they'll take a look at it here, but she's in a lot of pain as well. So it was Waba's elbow that caught Bruno. You know, Waba went over and, you know, said something yeah. sportsmanlike to, to Bruno, but got her somewhere in the face is what we're told. Yeah, I think it was an inadvertent either coming back, you know, in transition. Bruno, of course, dealing with that ankle injury that kept her out a few games, finally back into the rotation, feeling good about herself. Well, anytime you get hit in the head, too, they just want to be overcautious, make sure that, uh, you know, you got your neck, you got all kinds of pieces that are a part of that one. Just got to be super careful. And they're going to, officials are going to take a look at it. I think it's just going to be a basketball play, inadvertent. Nothing malicious whatsoever. Anthony Robinson and her crew will take a look at the monitor and see if they can tell if anything conclusive would say differently. 2.08 left to go in the third quarter. The Pilots with the 14-point lead. It's their largest lead of the game. And Pepperdine this quarter, I mean, really, we've talked about it. Oh, of their last 11 mm. from the field haven't scored for... A little bit over seven minutes. So Bruno, very slow to her feet, will walk off with assistance. MJ, the sophomore out of Spokane, missed those six games with the ankle injury and Little unsteady, mm -hmm. walking off the floor to be sure. One of the best defenders on this pilot club, just never ending motor. We have a media timeout. 
and we're going to take a quick media timeout. We're going to get an explanation from the officiating crew while Bruno gets looked at on the Portland pilot sideline. We'll take a quick break and then explain exactly what the officials found when we come back. Pilots with the 14-point lead here in the third. to go in the third quarter. The Pilots with the 14-point lead over Pepperdine. Physical game so far, Jennifer Mountain. We've had a couple of players go down. Nothing, nothing dirty, but just physical, and bodies are flying around. Yeah, and that last one with, with Bruno, there, it, there was an inadvertent just contact, just basketball contact, so nothing's been upgraded at this point. Obima, who had that scintillating first half, has been really quiet this second half. She's a rebound away from a double-double. Well, you credit Portland's defense. I really feel like they've done a nice job of taking her away. Fowler tries to go up and over Obima. She'd have none of it. Here's Walls. Nicely run on the fast break. The bucket is Mbanifo running the floor well. Great job in transition, and if you're the waves, that's exactly how you need to get yourself back in the ball game. Breaks get some a, turnovers. Yeah, breaks a seven and a half minute drought. My goodness. Shear, rimming out, board. Waba can sky. Mm. Lindsay flags down the miss on the Amosa effort. Meek. Frawley, so tough. Lindsay, there it is. Well, that's all Keely Frawley right there. Going to the offensive glass, and that's a great time to shoot the three, is on the kick out. Largest lead of the game now for the Pilots. You're looking at it, 51-36. After a really good first quarter, Pepperdine has gone cold this quarter, and it's killing them. Yeah, and they've had some really good opportunities to score. They just haven't knocked them down. Here's the double team. Good hands by Fowler. So the ball belongs to Pepperdine, but with only five yeah, seconds on the, the ball shot ball clock ball as Burnham ball. comes back onto the court for the Pilots. Five on the shot clock for Pepperdine. Well, Pepperdine's got to go quick here or create to the rim. And then Portland's going to have a last second chance here. There's Walls. A, yeah, it's nice. That was too easy. Yep. 13 points now for Walls. Oh, good hands. Walls looked like she had a clean swipe from behind. Instead, she's going to be nicked for her third foul, team's fourth. 
A little break there for the pilots. Yeah, absolutely. It did a really good job of coming from behind. So shot clock off, game clock a smidge over 11. Fowler. Boy, there's her fourth triple. We'll see if the basket is good. So if that does count, Fowler with the career tying fourth triple. And I think they're going to count the bucket. Our right. basket is good, and there's going to be a foul on Waba. Wow. Well, three, three fouls on Waba. That's just a huge turn of events. And if you're a pilot fan, you're thinking five point play. Well, absolutely. Waba just can't believe that she got called for that foul with Burnham battling down low. But again, I mean, you. You see the momentum shift a tiny bit where Pepperdine has a little bit of success. And then down here, you give up a five-point play going to the, into the fourth quarter. That's a big change of events right there. So Fowler now with 22 points. This pilot club has been shooting really well from beyond the arc in conference play. And Fowler is one of them. And today, she has been on fire. Uh, just tremendous four of seven from the three-point line and it's it's the confidence in which she's shooting like I said she's looking to shoot the three you know I would say again a month and a half ago that's not a shot she was looking for she was pretty much scoring down lower in the mid-range area and right now she becomes even harder to guard because she can extend the defense and then your guards go post up down low seventh 20-point game for Alex Fowler first free throw by Burnham a good Shooter from the charity stripe. And if you're Pepperdine, you're chin to chest. You are really bummed the way this third quarter went. 56-38, a five-point play to end the third quarter for the Pilots. Well, when you go in a scoring drought like they did in two of 14 from the field, you're going to find yourself in a deficit. And Portland, credit their defense, making it very tough, but a lot of different looks just in and out for the waves. And Portland did a nice job on the offensive end. Again, it's the Alex Fowler Show, 22 points. She's got four triples. That ties a career high, and we still have another quarter to go. of the fourth quarter just moments away. Portland with a huge lead over Pepperdine, 56-38. Brenna Green has got injury updates from both camps. Brenna? First of all, for Pepperdine, friend not going to be returning in this contest. For UP, I ran into MJ Bruno. She was coming out of the back. She gave me a big smile and a laugh when I asked her, is she good to go? She said, yeah, we'll see if she re-enters this game. The pilots might not need her at this point, but sounds like everything is all good to go there. Back to you guys. Way to cover some real estate, Brenna. Thank you for that update. Fourth quarter underway. Pilots with the healthy lead. Frigid shooting by Pepperdine, hurting the cause in that third quarter. 
Pilots open the frame with a turnover. Tell you what though, turnovers? Mm. Portland has been taking care of the basketball tonight. Only seven miscues at this point. Yeah, really clean so far. And again, credit their defense of just taking Pepperdine out of rhythm after that first quarter. Double-double. You got to love that for mm. Obima. More offensive rebounding this time on the weak side. It's Waba. Well, you got to put a body on somebody, and that's going to be the, the philosophy in this fourth quarter is just go get it if Waba. you're Pepperdine. Yeah, and Waba all over Fowler. Meek almost loses it. Waba hustling. Sheer rimming out. Good board by Amosa, the sophomore out of California, has been a force down low. Deep, deep, deep take is Walls. She's having herself a game 15 now. Again, just a great little crossover. She sees the floor so well and a nice little pull up. The block is going to go against Mbanifo. That's her second, team's first. Frawley back on the floor. Cochran will join the fray as well for the Pilots. Again, Lucy Cochran playing for the first time since that foot injury that happened against Washington State on December 7th. Great to have one of the best shot blockers and rim protectors in the game across the country back on the pilot floor. Cutter, Cochran, she scores! First points of the game for Cochran. That's got to feel good. Okay. Fowler having herself a game with another assist. That time to the cutting Cochran. Burnham, by the way, with her third foul. We're early in the fourth and final period, unless Pepperdine pulls off some heroics and forces OT. Waba. Nothing there from the outside. Well, again, another offensive board. Walls gives it up. Now Brody, mid-range. Waba. Boy, Jane has just Gosh. been relentless on the boards, hasn't amazing. she? Amazing. Just absolutely amazing. So Fowler picks up her second. Team's second. Now you got to credit a player like Waba the junior. All the youngsters are watching how she's going to conduct herself and play in this game that looks seemingly over. She has not stopped. Not at all. We got a couple scores around the league today. Right now, Gonzaga 51, LMU 41 in the fourth quarter. USD over Pacific in the fourth quarter, 59-51. And in the third, BYU 35 over St. Mary's 30. Got to hand it to BYU. Yep. You know, they've just, they've just gotten stronger and so stronger during conference play. Walls extra pass, and just like that, you've got a Pepperdine club shooting and scoring at the rim. That's the thing, they're breaking them down and they're, you know, offensive board second chances, giving themselves a chance in this game. There's a lot of time oh, left. Oh, there's a ton of time. And what was looking like a fat lead for Pepperdine, and Fowler saves the day. It looked like the fat lead for the Pilots, and now Fowler with her 24th points. Keeps the Pepperdine Wave team at bay. Well, you don't want to take your foot off the gas here if you're Portland. You want to keep doing what was working because this Pepperdine squad is not going to quit. Cochran affecting that shot. Nice job, Amosa. Another offensive rebound. And Banifo. Brody will go to the line. Nice cut by the freshman out of Missouri. I mean, 16-0 boards if you're Pepperdine right now. 
So Lindsay picks up that foul, her second, team's third. Pepperdine, one of the better rebounding teams in the conference, and they average 12 offensive rebounds a game. They are taking that to new heights today. Oh, they sure are. Right now, they lead 35 to 21 in the rebounding category. Brody, 6'3", freshman again out of Missouri. Gets one of two. Cochran comes up with it. Waba all over her. Shear. Ball fake. Now Cochran. Good Plenty patience. Of, plenty of time on the shot clock. Now down to six. There's the pick from Fowler. Well, you know, Pepperdine goes underneath that pick and Lindsay hurts you. Well, you, you just can't do that on a three-point shooter, and that's her bread and butter. Is She's a shooting guard. You cannot go underneath that screen. Brody underneath. Foul's going to go against Cochran, her first, team's fourth. Walls, again, just doing a great job of breaking down the defense, finding her down low. Lindsay with the three long balls. That ties a career high. And Lindsay having herself a game off the bench. Well, and that's exactly what you need when you have one of your best players out with an injury. Again, it's by committee, people stepping up, and you don't need somebody really going off for 30, but you need people scoring four to six points that maybe don't on a regular basis. So Walls trying to tie up Fowler. Instead of a jump ball called, Walls will be nicked for her fourth foul. Mm. Sixty-three, forty-eight, five twenty-five left to go in the fourth quarter. Pilots took over in the second frame and have never looked back. Dumps it inside. Fowler steps back. Fowler and one. <laughs> Invites the contact. So focused. She's got twenty-six and counting. Oh, just a great job of getting position down low, keeping somebody on her back, and a good feed by Frawley. Alex Fowler at the Brody with that foul. And watch the, just so patient, J-Mo. I don't, I, th I think she even surprised herself that that one went in. Can't complete the three-point play, but still. Fowler with 26 points. The reigning WCC player of the week. Seventh 20-point game of this season. Double figures in every game but one is Fowler just the model of consistency yeah I mean that's the thing and she's so efficient I mean 10 of 14 from the field doesn't take bad shots Waba gosh she's tough she really is I mean athletically my goodness my goodness is right and Fowler picks up her third team's fifth and Waba just will not go away but the lead belongs to the Pilots. Just under five minutes to go in the fourth period. 65-48, Portland with the lead. Alex Fowler, 26 points, five boards, three assists. Pay to watch her play every day.
65-48. Portland leading Pepperdine by a bunch. Alex Fowler again as she chases the pilot D1 all-time scoring record nearing that jmo has been sensational oh my gosh i mean you look at her line 26 points five rebounds three assists and doing it all in all areas and you know the thing about it is you, you talk to coach meek about selflessness and she's not that kid that you know is got the personality that's just all over the place she's just as solid she's quiet and does her job but i'll tell you she is hard to stop Remember, she had two points in the first quarter. Two points. Yeah. And look at her line now. She came into this game needing 36 points to become Portland's career leader in points in the D1 era. Well, she's sitting on 26. Yep. You never know. Well, the way she scores. And her three-point shooting, another double-figure three-point game for the Portland Pilots. They are just getting so much better, especially in conference play from long range. Well, and you look at that, and you look at the results that they're having, and obviously a ton of success. Eight and one right now. Only lost to number one Gonzaga in the conference. And travel. There's a travel. Well, you start hitting shots from the perimeter. It opens everything up, and... You know, Coach Meek has talked to us about this over and over again, how he really felt that he has kids that really can shoot the basketball at a high clip. They just work for whatever reason. And, and right now their hard work is really paying off from this in the last few weeks here. You could just see the confidence when they let those balls fly from distance. Well, they're just shooting in a better rhythm too. You get confidence, you see that ball go down the hole. and. It's, they just have done a terrific job of, sh of sharing the basketball. Whistle blows that play dead. Foul is gonna go against Lindsay, her third. Team's fifth. Mike Meek going for his 300th coaching victory in the college ranks, remember, just extraordinary success at George Fox on the D3 level. Extraordinary be before Scott Lakeham with one of his best hires ever brought him to the bluff. So a win tonight will give Mike his 300th career coaching victory. That's impressive. It's really impressive. I mean, everything that he did at, at George Fox, obviously, but then the, the culture that he's creating here and the success that they're having has just been tremendous. You know, Pepperdine went on a little bit of a run here, but again, almost a three minute drought without a field goal. Obima with the double-double. You gotta love her game. She scores about five points a game. She gives you 11 tonight and counting, and then the 10 boards. And can't get that one at the rim. There's the run out by Burnham and scores. She goes flying, nothing called against Waba. 12 now for Burnham over her seasonal average of 11. Walls just continues to keep grinding. She'll go to the line. Love her game. Sheer picks up her fourth. Yeah, she's had a really good second half of creating not only for herself but for her teammates. Again, Pepperdine really, sh you know, struggling to score the basketball, but she put him in a position to get quality looks. So Walls right now sitting on 15 points. You know, and again, in the Patriot League with Bucknell, Walls, who transfers to Pepperdine after four years with Bucknell, she was a defender, she was a distributor. No 20-point games last year. Well, she's got four of them this year, and she's knocking on the door again. 17 points here for Walls. Well, and that's what Pepperdine needs from her. They need her to be a scoring threat, especially with low in numbers, with people with injuries. And I, I think she's kind of embraced that role and really done a nice job with it. Samia on the floor now for the Portland Pilots. Malika, the freshman out of New Zealand. Kaitu back on the floor for the Pilots as well. Samia cutting. One on the shot clock for Frawley. Shot clock violation 
Fowler to the bench, would you imagine with the 26 points, J-Mo, that she has finished for the, for the night? I would expect she's done for the night, yeah. She's had a great, great offensive performance. And you certainly don't want to risk anything at this point. Droughts have really killed the Pepperdine cause. Mm. You know, they, they've had some real positives. Their, their offensive rebounding has been something to behold. They battle, they fight, but you go on droughts like that. Yep. And against this kind of a, a club, a club, you know, who's in contention for the WCC title, you forget about it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it, I, I agree. There's been a lot of positive moments and positive things that have happened. They just haven't been consistent, you know, throughout the game. And you just cannot, especially in this conference, day in and day out, you cannot go four or five minutes. They went seven minutes in that third quarter without scoring. Yeah. You're going to be on the other end of that one. Well, and it's only a 15-point game. So Walls continues to do the job. Now she's eight of nine from the free throw line. Rims out there. Waba almost getting an offensive board right there off the free throw line. So Fowler sitting right now with the 26 points to lead everybody. Remember WCC player of the week? Well, I'm already casting a vote for her to get it again. Mm -hmm. We'll see how she does Saturday when next up for this Portland bunch is LMU here at the Child Center. Hamosa, her first. Hamosa with her first, team's fourth. And it doesn't get any easier for Pepperdine as they go to Gonzaga next time out. But the Pilots looking to go to 9-1 and one in conference play and keep the heat on the Zags yep. in terms of this regular season conference championship. And now everything coming to a halt with a lot of free throws. Fouls and free throws, baby. Yep. Obima with her third. So here's Kaitu'u. How great was it to see Lucy Cochran back into the lineup, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, just as she gets more minutes and gets comfortable, I mean, the rim protection, their defense completely changes with her in the ball game and it's hard to get into a flow offensively and be productive when you, you know, you get two minutes here, two minutes there. But she's going to be an enforcer and a big part of them moving forward. Walls somehow keeps the dribble alive and finds a wide open Obima. 13 points now for Obima. That is her season high. Yeah, one of the big bright spots for this Waves team. Sixty-eight, fifty-five, under two to go. Still a very healthy lead if you're a pilot fan. Things getting a little mucked up in the key. Three on the shot clock for Samia. So shot clock violation, another one going against the Portland Pilots. And I just think Portland Wright now, now is getting going a little too slow. You can get ball movement and not take a look at the rim. They've got to get ball movement and get quality shots. Right now, Pepperdine looking at a season low in triples with just one. And really just haven't had too many looks at the three-point line. Field goal percentage looks to be a season low as well for Pepperdine. All those scoring droughts. Walls flips it up. So another 20-point game for Walls. Her fifth of the season. She's terrific. Yeah, I've been really impressed with her. I mean, we talk about the ability to get to the paint. Great hesitation, crossover, change of pace. Buck five left to go in the game. A game well in hand for the Pilots. Meek all the way to the rim and scores. Mikkel starting now for the injured Haley Andrews. She's got five. Remember, Pepperdine had two six-point leads in the first quarter, led by a singleton in the first quarter. But Portland took over in the second frame and has never looked back. Yeah, I thought at the beginning of this game it was going to be a little bit different, just the way 
Pepperdine came out and threw that first punch. Portland responded, and again, second and third quarters been really good. So Walls with 20-point games in both contests against the Pilots, but didn't have any help tonight. And Fowler being Fowler, she with 20-point games when these two teams have met, but Alex to the tune of 26. Wow. Career high is 35 for Alex, if you're wondering. One point after one quarter for Fowler. And the rest of the game, how do you like me now? <laughs> Final seconds of the game here at the Child Center. Dominant performance after that first quarter by the Pilots. Brody can't get it home. And the crowd will let you know the result of this one. <laughs> Counting it down, final seconds. Final score tonight, the Portland Pilots. And that'll do it. And the Pepperdine Waves. Portland with a 70 to 57 victory over Pepperdine. Well, I'll tell you, Alex Fowler was terrific offensively for the Pilots, but I felt like their defense coming out of halftime really changed things. Pepperdine struggled to score on the offensive end, and it was a great team effort. And you can see this team, even with Haley Andrews out, moving forward, getting better, and ready to push forward. What does it tell you about this club? They've still got to be devastated and almost in a state of shock, losing Haley Andrews, blowing the same knee out again. What does it say about them able to win three straight? Well, it's the depth in which they have on the bench. You know, people have stepped up. She was out at the beginning of the season, so I think that probably helped a little bit more than people realize. So they've had to play without her, the same group. This is a different team from last year. So they, they've had different roles, and you can see their roles. They're adjusting, they're accepting them, and people are stepping up with great individual performances. It's a great team effort. Again, they have so many different weapons, and people are going to need to step up in different areas. Such an impressive, per, impressive performance by the Pilots. Team effort, but you can't help but tip your cap to the one and only Alex Fowler filling up the stat sheet with the 26 points. And speaking of Alex, Brenna standing by with Fowler. Brenna? Happy Australia Day to you, Alex Fowler. 15 points in that second quarter. What is it like when you're out there and it just feels like you can't miss? I mean, it's a credit to my team and my coaches. Like, they have really good plays set up for me to get the ball. And again, like, the team just find a way to get it to me. And I give credit to them for that. One of the things that was so striking about that second quarter was your three-point shooting three threes in that second quarter all of a sudden you're nailing threes what does that feel like for you as well I really I mean I'm loving it because I just put in so much work on the offseason if you saw me my freshman year I was able in threes so I'm really happy with how far I've come and I just yeah I'm really happy with it you guys get another big win here tonight what is it like going out there and being able to keep up this level of play without Haley by your side it's obviously it's a big change and it's really upsetting to lose Haley. She's such a great player, such a great team leader. Um, she's still with us. She's more like a coach now for us. And, you know, we've got players that have to step up. We've got Kelsey stepping up. We've got Mikel stepping up. We've got Malika stepping up. So all these players are having to step up and make new uh, adjustments. And I think they're doing a great job. What's on the line for you this next game? You're 10 points away from breaking that UP all-time scoring record. How does that feel? That's that's scary. That's amazing, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's amazing. Okay, hey, finally, I mentioned it was Australia Day. Explain Australia Day and what's your favorite thing about Australia Day? About Australia? Australia Day. Uh, I love being around my family. I wish I was with them uh, today. Um, especially we just like to hang out and just do a little bit of family stuff but I know they're watching right now so hi mom and dad <laughs> hi mom and dad <laughs> all right back to you guys <laughs> thank you Brenna and thank you Alex all right that's a wrap from the bluff Portland defeating Pepperdine 70 to 57 Alex Fowler 26 points and all those triples all right
Portland defeating the Waves for the eighth time in the last nine matchups. Mike Meek wins number 300 as a college coach. Big, big, big victory for the Pilots. They go to 9-1 and one in WCC play, still in the race. For Jennifer Mountain and Brenna Green, I'm Ann Schott saying so long from the Child Center. Loved having you with us tonight, as always. All right, stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy your weekend. LMU, next up for the Pilots. Good night, everybody.